Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer 3 video. So it's time to now discuss the art book, mainly because now is the time that people are receiving it and yeah, there's a few units there which aren't in the game, so there's a few things to discuss. Now, these I don't believe are cut contents, but rather stuff that we'll see in the future that possibly Creative Assembly wanted to put there as hints. And some of these units are actually quite exciting, so without further ado, let's just jump right in and talk about each individual unit. So if we go into the Game 1 section, we do have some concept art regarding a Gold Wizard. This is obviously a spellcaster with a lore of metal for the Empire. It's something that we've been waiting for for a long time, considering that we obviously have Balthazar Geld, so I believe it's only a matter of time until we see an FLC for the Gold Wizard hero, as Creative Assembly likes to include Empire heroes when Empire DLC comes out, and there's loads of possible Empire DLC. There's not much to explain, so we're going to move on quite a bit. I just wish that we started getting the heroes more often, because the Empire does need a bit more magic variety, we don't really have that much just yet. So now we can start going into some more unique units. Interestingly enough, there's some concept art for a piece of the Chimera, which is something that I've been waiting for for a long time. This is a creature that normally could be found with the Warriors of Chaos. Now in its basic functionality, the Chimera is very similar to that of the Manticore. It's a flying monster which can move around very quickly, it can do a decent amount of damage, and it's there to basically snipe out other monsters, or even snipe out some artillery which may be left astray. It depends on what you want to use them for and what you're more commonly using them for in Warhammer 1 and Warhammer 2. However, the difference between a Manticore and a Chimera is the fact that the Chimera is stronger, it's a higher tier unit, and it does have a lot more functionality. So the Chimera on the tabletop could be upgraded to have various different bonuses to make it a lot better, really. You could give it a Flaming Breath attack, you could give it Regeneration, or even Poison attacks, and it's something that was commonly used, it was just a big monster, I know a lot of people aren't too keen on them, but they were very useful on the tabletop, especially if you wanted to have something quite quick moving around. So the concept of this could mean that we'd eventually get different types of Chimera, or we could just get one, which preferably I would like one with all the benefits already attached. Possibly just a standard Chimera at the very beginning, but with some tech you can then upgrade it to be quite powerful, as I imagine that this would be a very high tier unit anyway. Vermin Lords. Okay, so this is really interesting, because Vermin Lords are greater demons of the Skaven the only type of demonic unit that we actually have available to them, and it's something that we've been waiting for for a long, long time now, considering that we did have the Horn Rat communicating with us in Warhammer 2. It's very strange that we didn't receive this in Warhammer 2, but then again, it kind of makes sense that Warhammer 3 would be the way to introduce them. More specifically because, you know, Greater Demons are now Lord Choices, and Vermin Lords could be rather interesting, especially with how they could be implemented. So, as you can see on screen, there were different types of Vermin Lords. We had the standard version, which was from the army books, we had a Forge World version, which just looks absolutely awesome, and then we do have the End Times variant, which is the more commonly known one. The concept art version seems to be a bit of a mixture between the Forge World and the End Times one. It just seems that way at the very least to me. But how would Vermin Lords perform on the battlefield? Well, they would be a Lord Choice, a greater demon with access to Skaven spells. If we go with the End Times route, there were many different possibilities. One was geared with stealth, one was geared with magic, one was geared with damage, the other one was geared with the other lore of magic, and then there was a more generalized middleman. Whereas if we go to the pre-end times version, it was just a lord character which had access to the Skaven spell laws, and was quite powerful, it had terror, it was fast moving, it's just essentially a gigantic demonic Skaven, which, you know, is obviously awesome. I do believe that the inclusion of their concept art means that we'll eventually get them, considering that we're waiting for Gracia Fankwall, and really there's not a lot of Skaven stuff left, so they need another big type of thing, and, well, you know, it could be possible with a Vermin Lord, say we could level up a Gracia up to rank 30, rank 50. It would have to be much further down the line to a normal Herald turning into an Exalted Greater Demon. And then they could maybe have the chance, maybe have the chance of turning into a Vermin Lord, where there'll be an RNG feature where either the character will turn into it, or you could risk it permanently dying, because that's very Skaven, and obviously then a Vermin Lord monster character, because, I mean, it's easy enough to do, isn't it, by using the same assets. So this next thing is rather interesting. You'll see in the Bretonia section we do have some lance art, but one of those is very, very curious, the one at the very bottom, as it belongs to Bohemond Beastlayer, the Duke of Bastogne, a rather interesting character and one of the best Bretonian models 
ever released. This is a character from Warhammer Fantasy 5th edition and is a miniature that I constantly use when I'm playing as Bretonia because it just looks that cool. This is a character that is known to fight big monsters and dragons, hence the title, and his area of Baston, his dukedom, is constantly at war with orcs, skaven and other creatures it's one of these characters which I was expecting to come eventually. In all fairness, I thought this was a character that we would have had in Warhammer 2 during the rework, but then we ended up getting Raponce. Now, Bretonia as itself doesn't really have that much missing. It's one of those races which didn't get a lot of attention during the lifespan of Warhammer Fantasy, but if we do get something, maybe alongside some crusade mechanics, you know, just a bit more Bretonian lore, it does make sense to add in a total badass, and obviously Bohemond is the total badass. If I recall correctly, around two, maybe even three years ago, it was on record with a member of Creative Assembly staff saying that he would have liked to have Bohemond eventually added in, and it does make sense because it's just a really cool looking model, he's got great lore, and, well, Bretonia does need a little bit more help. The rework was good, the rework was very, very good, but a little bit more won't hurt. And lastly, we have something which really surprised me, which was the concept art for a giant spined chaos beast, which in all honesty would have likely helped Nurgle out a lot, given the fact that he's kind of lacking in troops. But what this is, is a giant chaos warhound. Yeah, this is a warhound, but an absolutely massive beastie, able to do a lot of damage. You can get this as, well, undivided, you can get it as Mark of Corn, you can get it with Zinch, you can get it with Nurgle, you can get it with Sinesh. It's a rather big beastie from the Storm of Magic supplement, which is probably why a lot of people kind of forget that this exists, mainly because Storm of Magic was so horrendously overpowered, but yeah. Massive monster, single entity, able to do a lot of damage, it's quite spiked, so it's there to be in melee, and it's supposed to be quite fast moving too, I mean even 7 inches on the tabletop as movement was quite big, really. This would have been quite good because it would have acted as an anti-large unit, I'd say, and it would have been very helpful for Nurgle. It's nice to see that the concept art is there, and this is likely to come in in the future. We already know that it's got some Nurgle concept art, so maybe with Tamakon it kind of makes sense because we'll eventually need some Nurgle-style units, and this will be quite good to have. It would be nice if we ended up getting this just for all the factions, though, because really it would just be recolors mostly. But it's quite exciting to see that there, because they're looking into as many supplements as possible, and that's a good thing. Yes, they've been doing that for Warhammer 1 and Warhammer 2, but Chaos didn't really have too many things that it could go about, especially since some stuff from Chaos has been moved to Koresh and all that. But this is great. This is honestly really great. I'm kind of hyped up. I really hope that we do get this creature in the future, mainly because, again, it just looks awesome. Call cool fact is a big thing. It's a large target. It's got Swift Stride. It's got Terror. It's got Regeneration. This is a big beastie which is able to do quite a lot of damage and well fast moving especially for Nurgle would have been very helpful again I know yes we'll get it eventually but yeah it would have been very helpful in vanilla so that's the explanation of what the concept art relates to I can't wait to see these eventually implemented hopefully it's not cut content that's what kind of worries me because you never know but yeah, it still makes me think that we'll eventually get them, considering that obviously this is a new book that was to hype up Warhammer 3. It looks very promising, and new Bretonia content is always going to be really, really cool. So yeah, I wonder what's going to happen with that. If they're going to add in the Lord by himself, or they're going to add in some units, some new mechanics... I don't know, but we're going to have to wait and see. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and let's start a bit of a discussion. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel, as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25% off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code, which is also in the description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to our higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.